Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So Tran and I just finished up watching the Senior Bowl. So we're going to react and talk about some of our Longhorn favorites that were there today. Some captains in Sam Ellinger, Taquan Graham. And uh, jump into some other things, some other guys that we, we liked in terms of what we got to see on the NFL Network broadcast. Uh, Tran, it's really good to see you, man. As everybody know. knows... It's been a very tough uh, week uh, for me personally and my family. So for everybody that has been um, just put, coming forth with their thoughts and prayers, especially on the last video, social media, all the comments have been overwhelming. But it's a it's a overwhelming with with love and God's love, and I'm so thankful for for everybody out there. Um, my mom can feel it. Uh, I can certainly feel it. And, you know, where we're going to continue this fight. Um, she's not in great shape right now. Uh, just being candid with you guys. But we are uh, trying to work on, on it with her and, and the right hands each and every day uh, in the facility that she is at. So appreciate you. Uh, and Tran, thank you, brother, for, for, being, for being there for me as always. Always, man. Always. So let's get to uh, the Senior Bowl. So it was the national team versus the American team. Looked like the national team was coached by the Miami Dolphins coaching staff led by Brian Flores. And then the American team was coached by the Carolina Panthers staff led by Matt Rule. So uh, some familiar faces there in itself. And it was, uh, you know, interesting to see Coach Rule out there again uh, for, for us Big 12 fans. But Tran, just your takeaways. I know let, – let's start off with the Texas guys, man. Um, just your overall takeaways from from Jake Ellinger out there, uh, quarterback <laughs> in the Texas, the Texas Longhorns. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Sam, uh, it was great to see him start. And he started fast, too. So, um, he, he was hitting all his timing throws. He was hitting – he was hitting his quick outs. I know he was four for 10 on completion rating, but he got the first touchdown of the game, drove down, got a field goal he, but on both of his scoring drives. Uh, on both of his drives, he got scores, which which looked good. Um, two of the only two really bad passes that I saw were over a, a little seam route that he had to the tight end. I don't remember which tight end it was. Um, and then when they're backed up against the goal line and they, they, they did a little swing pass to the, uh, uh, running back, and it was th that was that was a bad pass, uh, the one that Jabril Cox tried to tried to mm -hmm. steal steal a pick six out of that one. But other than that, you know, he he was sharp. We we only got limited time for for him. Um, I don't know if it's I really don't know if it had something to do still with his shoulder injury, and he was just toughing out just because this is an interview for him. Uh, but. But he he looked he he did what I think he needed to do. I I wish that they called a couple more plays where he could drive the ball down the field, but you know, it is what it is on that point. Yeah. So to to the point about the reps, I was a little confused about that as well because he only he only had ten attempts. He was four or ten for like forty two yards, and he had the touchdown to Demetri Felton from UCLA. And I mean, a I was very impressed, and I said impressive start. Assume, on Twitter, assuming I'd, we'd get to see more. Uh, but I was impressed with this command and, and them leading the team down the field and, and getting first downs. Where they had the hiccups was on that third one where they had the rules where it was kind of like quarter by quarter, right? So And, and then change of possession. Um, so he the, the, the two drives, they, they got one short field, uh, you know, off of a quick change of possession, I think, on the fourth down or whatever it was. And then they scored. That's when they scored the touchdown. The other one, you know, they had a nice drive down the field. So those were positives. I thought even some of the throws where uh, it was more wide receiver error or, or tough catch to make, I thought the ball was coming out of his hand cleaner and, and was in the right spot. So I did see some of that zip. Some of the – also, what we have to understand as fans, the senior bowl for the scouts that are there, for the coaching staffs that are there, because – We'll touch on the, the jump that the Miami Dolphins and the Carolina Panthers got to have this particular week, considering there's no combine, right? But they're looking at this, A, over the course of the week, how consistent are you? Mm -hmm. Are you growing over the course of the week with the special attention and instruction we get with you? Because if I'm, say, Miami Dolphins defensive line coach, right? 
I got to spend every day with Taquan Graham. If I taught you something on Monday, are you doing it on Wednesday? Are you, or or am I seeing, am I seeing, and it could just be tweaks because a lot of these guys are really good, right? Like, it's not like, you know, we're making, it's not like a camp with middle school kids where, you know, I need to see a whole overhaul of, of skill, but it's just certain tweaks in certain ways, you know, did this guy practice like gangbusters on Tuesday and then, you know, he's nowhere to be found at the, yeah. yeah. Or did, or did, or who, or who practiced their ass off all week and then the lights came on and they can't perform. Mm -hmm. Those are all, these are all valid things to, to look at and vice versa. Um, To me, Sam's always been more of a gamer and, and that's cool in college uh, because from, from the reports, he was hit or miss in practices. He had some good throws, some good days. He has other days where, you know, I read the report. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like some of the struggles that Sam had at Texas. So he can't go with the gamer thing. If you're going to be in the quarterback room and your job on the team is going to be more of a scout team role or to be consistent and be ready when called upon, you're going to have to practice at a game type level every single day. And that's not just for Sam. That's for any prospective kid that's not a top 10 pick. Right. And, and, and you're looking to make a roster. Or you're looking to find a role on the team. Um, Tran, I did want to uh, uh, share my screen for those of you who did not see the NFL Network broadcast uh, for, for the wonderful folks out there, you know, because we talk about execution on this channel. And Tran, it's not it's not just execution on the football field. It's execution across the board. When you guys are producing a product for us, this right here is unacceptable because, because we, we were watching the game. You've had ample time to prep for this. You know your graphics, you know, quick. And I, and I understand, you know, every now and again, you may misspell somebody's name. But, you know, it's like, bro, we, we just sat here before the video and typed in – we didn't even type in Sam's name. We were just like, hey, Ellinger. we just typed in Ellinger, assuming, you know, what, what pops up in Google image search. Tran, I think you went to the web, the Texas sports website, the official website of the Longhorns on the roster. I and controlled hit, F there. Controlled F. <laughs> and it went directly to his hands. Because <laughs> it, go, it goes by, it goes by number. And he, I, I think he's 42 or something like that. And Sam was 11, of course. So Sam's name is going to come up first, but uh, it's a little, this is a this, NFL network puts out a good product. Let's, let's I agree. And this, this to me, honestly, is unacceptable. And it, it, I, I could see if it was a, a team that isn't nationally known. But this was – he was the face for the program. And they even mentioned it. They even mentioned it. And it was like, hey, it seems like he's been at Texas for nine years. Like, they, they tried to make that joke. Like, then you know what he looks like if you, if you know how long he's been there and know, how, know that he started since his freshman year. It's bad. It, it just wasn't good. It, just didn't look, yeah, it, it wasn't a good look. To, just had to give uh, NFL Network a hard time for that one. Um, I, I'm not. I wasn't pissed. I wasn't for real pissed off about it or anything like that. I think it's just funny. I, uh, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It made for good uh, social media content. Um, wrapping up on Ellinger, I don't think he necessarily improved his draft position in my opinion, this week. I think the things you knew, like Brian Flores said it best before the game. They were asking him, like, hey, you picked him to start the game, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's like, yeah, he's a great leader. We knew that coming in. And he proved that again this week. And he controls, like, all the things that, the intangibles things. Uh, And I know a lot of you guys on this channel, I've said on Twitter, a lot of you guys didn't think Sam is draftable or you don't think that, He's an NFL quarterback, and some of you have advocated that he should change positions, uh, things of that sort. You guys need to stop evaluating him out of a lens of a franchise quarterback. He's Don't evaluate him like you evaluate Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields. Like, there's there's levels to this, okay? And, and, and yeah, every now and again, you'll have a Dak Prescott or a Russell Wilson or a Tom Brady sneak through the cracks totally granted and I'm not going to say that that's not possible for anybody that's coming up in the draft that's projected to go later but realistically you're looking at Sam Ellinger as somebody who 
with those intangibles and the ability to work hard in the weight room and the classroom and to pick up your offense and to set the culture in your building, why can't he develop into QB2 in your, in, in, for a team? I don't see like like brothers out here talking about oh he doesn't he doesn't hit throws downfield or he's not he's never accurate and all this type of stuff as, as if all these other backup quarterbacks in the NFL are tearing it up. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, and I hate to sound like Stephen A. Smith right there, but excuse me. Look at the Cowboys. Like Ben DiNucci got drafted, and he throws the ball like Uncle Rico. Stop it! Like like like. <laughs> It, the, the 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 you know the whole like Tim Tebow got drafted with the first round, and granted yeah. that was ridiculous in itself, Josh McDaniels. But we gotta be reasonable here. I'm not. I, I if if Sam Ellinger becomes a starting quarterback in the NFL, I would be surprised. Okay, so I am being reasonable here. I'm not. I'm not one of these Texas fans that's like he's amazing and, and swearing all these praises. But do I think? He could have a Colt McCoy-like career where in year two or year three or year four, whatever year it is, your starter goes down for a month. Tran, do you think he could get you by for a month in the league at some point? I think so, personally. Yeah. I mean, uh, there was there was a year that – the year that Tom Brady had to uh, sit out for for five games for, for Deflategate. They had three different quarterbacks that played and won. Mm -hmm. So it just all depends on the prep for the, for week to week, and I think that's what's important about the senior uh, senior bowl is that you actually get a crash course on how they prep for a week for one specific game. One Good of the point. things that they haven't even touched on really is they had interviews during that time. With the we don't know how he interviewed. I'm going to assume that he interviewed very well since he's had a a camera in his face since he was 16 years old. Sure. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that he said all the right things that all the coaches wanted to hear, and they saw that he he's gonna put in the work to prep. He's gonna get drafted. I mean, I said this on the on the uh, roundtable. Do I think he's gonna start? I said no. I think both him and him and Mond are gonna be backup quarterbacks, which is it's fine. I mean, not not everyone is made. There's there's 32 starting positions in the NFL, so it, it, it's. A really hard job to get. It's one of the most competitive jobs yes. to get in America. Barney. So, so uh, it, he's got he's going to make a roster, and I, I think he'll have a a pretty long career just from from a uh, mental standpoint. From him, I have him right now probably in the four to six round range. Yeah, I, I, um, I'd say fifth to sixth round. May, maybe he'll sneak into the fourth. But. Yeah, I think I think there's some some team out there that could say, oh. Um, you know, we like him. Like, did I think that Jalen Hurts would go in the second round last year? Hell no. But he interviewed well. He had good command. Now he's a better athlete for sure um, and a little bit stronger arm. So that vaults him up there. But I didn't – I personally was surprised when that happened. So it goes to show you that these teams and especially these coaching staffs that want a certain type of person in the room – that's going to matter. But to move forward, uh, another guy we had out there, Taquan Graham, a defensive tackle. He had himself a day, Tran. He had himself a week. I mean, he, uh, all, all the videos, all the highlight videos of him in one-on-ones, it looked like he was owning them. Whether he was, he was doing the easy step back pull, pull forward just to just to accelerate through, or just the swim moves that he was doing. Again. I mean, he showed different, different moves that, I, honestly, I, I hadn't seen this year. He was getting pressure during the game. I think he had. I think he had one sack. He could have had multiple sacks, but he, uh, whenever he was one on one, when he was going one on one with someone, he was owning that. He was owning that rep. Uh, he, I did see a lot of a lot of double teams, which I think is a uh, should be a huge compliment to you as a def defensive tackle. Agreed. Um, and them running the ball most of the time away from you. I think that's a that's a huge compliment. Uh, I know that's that uh, a lot of people aren't going to take take credit for that or anything like that. But if, if they're running to he he lined up a lot of the times on the right side and they're running to the left side, it, it says a lot. Um, I do also think that the national team did have a very very good defensive front. Yes, as well. So yes, but uh, but.
but it started with him. And you could tell you could tell there's a drop off when the second team came in from the from from that first team. He was he was really um, like you said, a all week because uh, you know he, he they started kind of showing him in a little the promotional stuff, but you know this is what we do with Texas defensive linemen, baby. This is what we do, Trey. We were talking about um, before with Puna Ford and how well he played at the Senior Bowl and the disrespect that he got. And I think this is a great point you made about Puna. Was you know he he died, he was, as good as he was, he didn't get drafted, and we all were like, we should have been like you know if we put on the tape like he was beating dudes that were projected to go day one day two consistently, and he you was look be- at he was beating the uh, um the the linemen from from Alabama consistently. I mean he was making them look like he was on roller skates, honestly. And uh, Puna, not only that, he had the accolades to to back it up too. He he was one of those guys w- uh, against us was, you know, he was getting double teamed every single play, mm-hmm. so he didn't have the statistics to back it up. Well, he was still a Big Twelve defensive lineman, but he was of the year. Big Twelve defensive lineman of the year. I know, you know, a, a lot of people don't think that that's that's important, but to me, that is. Um, and he dominated the Senior Bowl, and you're seeing what he's doing in the NFL now. I think he was a top five defensive tackle by pro uh, football focus rating. And then they, sh- they showed up his salary comparative to the other. They did. They to, showed his salary and, compared and like, to production. Mm-hmm. Way to flex on him. <laughs> so his time is coming to get paid. Yeah. But I, I, I think, you know, the difference with, with, with where Graham's going to have more success from a draft standpoint is size, right? Size, yeah. Right off the bat, he's six foot four. Right, you know, I think well, what it, what it, what it was his official height because I know the six Texas, three and a half or something. Yeah, like something that. like that. So so it, it, we'll, we'll call it six foot four. He was what two ninety between two ninety two ninety five mm-hmm. or whatever it was. Uh, so the size is there. That's not an issue. The violence is there. Yeah, the I, I texted you that. I, I they zoomed in. They they replayed a play. And it, it was his back, and you saw him. I think he was going against a uh, old, old boy from uh, from Alabama, um, and he his hands were violent during that. And I that was the first time I've seen him with with you know, the 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 little swim moves and the uh, and smacking his hands away and trying to smack the body away. That's a big guy that you're trying to smack away, by the way. Yeah, Deontay <laughs> Brown is a giant. Yes, and I like I like Brown. Yeah. I thought Brown yeah. had I thought I think Brown had a good week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he won that rep. He won a mm-hmm. rep against Creed Humphrey earlier in the week. Creed Humphrey made himself some money this week, mm-hmm. I thought, and bumped himself up. You know, this is actually a really good center class. We'll get to some other people we liked, but Graham one on ones really, really had his way. So, you know, that's that's one a sneaky pick in the mid rounds where somebody's going to jump on it. I he at some point people are going to see what. Like, Texas's credibility has to take a turn for the better because Puna Ford went undrafted, and and you saw the Seahawks struck gold there. Uh, Houston Texans with Charles Aminahieu, I believe he was, what, a late fifth-round pick. They he's struck playing. gold there. He's, he's balling playing. out. Yeah, he's, yeah. One of their, he's one of their better defensive players, right? So at some point, you look at these Texas defensive linemen and how they've, how they've developed – and, and 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 whatnot. It's this group in particular, I know we've had development problems as a entire program, but Oka first playing for a uh, these people <laughs> for a Super Bowl. There, there, you know, there's some there's some positives there, um, and I think some one of these teams is going to be smarter um, to try to take advantage of that. Malcolm Roach making the New Orleans Saints this year and playing like mm-hmm. there, there's. Again, there's some value to be had with with take on Graham, and I'm I'm curious to see the team that um that 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 jumps on it. So, who else stood out to you uh, today in the game? We'll we'll just kind of talk overall with with a lot of these guys because we're also NFL fans, and some of these folks, you know, we may want the Cowboys to kind of take a look at. So, who who stood out to you, man? So, I mean, I'll, I'll start off with uh, uh, Michael Carter from UNC. We we actually knew about him because we would we'd look from afar because our our old 
our old coach was uh was coaching them and they had two backs that were over thousand yards rushers. Mm -hmm. But he Monte Williams as well, who left his yeah. junior. He he looked he looked special today. I mean he he had an extra pop. I think he was the one who set up the first touchdown with a with a big pretty, run. Lo pretty like 30, 30 something yard run. Uh, he had the run up the gut. Yeah, uh, credit credit to the line for carrying him in. But uh, he, he just looked good. He was out of the backfield catching the ball, uh, running between the tackles, running outside the tackles. He just looks like he's an all uh, every down back already ready for the NFL. And it's interesting you say that because a few years ago when you look at somebody like his size, because he's small, but he's got so much pop. Mm -hmm. And he and he's not like small like where, like a Maurice Jones Drew was small, but he, he weighed like two twenty or whatever. Like mm -hmm. Michael Carter's like two hundred pounds. Yeah, I think he they got him at like five eight or whatever. But the point is, he runs behind his pads. He's a he's he's an explosive runner, averaging eight yards per carry. Led the nation in yards per carry this season, and. You know, for him to run, for you know, they played – now they got 12 games in. But for him to break uh, – but he only played 11 because they didn't play the ball. So 11 games, he broke, what, 1,200 yards rushing and had to split the carries with a dude that might get drafted higher than him because that mm -hmm. guy – Javante Williams is actually big. Like, yeah. when I say big, he's 5'10", 225, and Javante had like 19 touchdowns on the ground this year. And another 1,100 yards. And Michael Carter just comes in there, and he had one of the best runs this season against Miami. Like, he's he's been – both of those dudes have been very underrated the last two years of college football. Because they almost went 1,000, 1,000 the year before. I think one of them came up at, like, 995 yards rushing. And the other yeah. one was over 1,000. So Crazy. these guys have been uber productive for two years now. And he kept the party going today, right? He kept the party going today. And they showed the stat during the game about him averaging four and a half yards per carry after contact. That tells me all I need to know about you. And then they show him saying uh, early in the week that he was taking reps in the slot. So that tells me the brother's also aware because this moves, this takes me to the next person that impressed me, which is Demetri Felton. Mm -hmm. The NFL is evolving with the type of back. Now, we've been going this way for a while. Where we've always had these type of backs, and some people were ahead of the game. Like back in the day, uh, Tran, I know you remember him because he used to torch our Cowboys, but some of you younger people may not remember a guy by the name of Brian Westbrook who used to play for the Philadelphia Eagles uh, and was coached in college by one Stan Drayton, by the way. But Brian Westbrook was 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 one of these type of dudes that was like 5'8", 200 pounds. And how did he kill us, Trey? He killed us catching the ball as much catching as he the running ball the ball. Out, yeah. Out. Right? He, he was literally a dual threat type of running back. But you didn't see a whole lot of dudes like that. We saw more – growing up, we saw more like Between Sean Alexander. Runners, yeah. yeah, dudes like that. Or Tiki Barber or Clinton Portis. Like those type of dudes. Westbrook was kind of different. Now the league is more – Brian Westbrook type of dudes. Yeah, the the offensive is, offenses have evolved so much that they're trying to spread out the defense to try to try to get some matchups here or there. And I mean, you you see, uh, you see, the Chiefs have been doing it since mm. essen essentially um, Jamal Charles. They've essentially been doing it mm -hmm. since then. So um, I mean, he he's going to find himself a home. And it'd be extremely dangerous if he found himself a home in um, in Arizona or something like that, <laughs> because they will find a spot for him. Arizona could use a player like that. Like, like, would you be surprised if, if like the first few weeks of the season he's not starting for somebody? No, not at all. I wouldn't be surprised. And I know he's probably going to go. You know, I've seen some things for him as high as the second round. I don't think he's going to drop any lower than the third, especially after the brother from Memphis last year, Antonio Gibson, mm -hmm. what he did his rookie year, the dynamite rookie year he had with the Washington football team. The year before the Cowboys take Tony Pollard, who played wide receiver at, at Memphis, we move mm -hmm. him to running back and, and you see what he did. That's why I'm so high on Demetri Felton. And that's the young man from UCLA who Sam threw the touchdown pass to who lined up at wide receiver 
but playing a bulk of this season at running back. It's the ability to play more. And then, Tran, you're, it, and it's funny because you were like, I look at Felton like a Randall Cobb. Like, it, it, you were the one that made that comp. And I'm like, yeah. that's how versatile these dudes are. Randall Cobb's a slot receiver. Yeah. But it's <laughs> one of those things where you can play either way. Yeah. He, he just uh, – I just want to see his his, uh, his run on uh, on Pro Day. If he runs a good 4-4, you know, he's he's locking down a top 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 two round pick, I think. In my uh, top, maybe top three, but still, he'll he'll make a team, and it, depending on what situation he's in, I agree with you. It would not shock me that he's starting by week two. So Carter was your guy, uh, Demetric Felton. I mean, we we're high on both of the on, on a lot of these guys. I, it's just the, the positionless fo- they're positionless football players. The, you can line them up anywhere. There, uh, Carter was catching punts in pregame. Uh, uh, Felton was a great pick pick returner at UCLA. So, guys that we, you know, positionless football. I mentioned Deontay Brown, just kind of some of the other people we had on the list. Um, Huge. Massive, massive, Huge. massive. Imagine yeah. imagine getting into goal line form with him, knowing it's going to be a run up the, up the right side. You're hating that. <laughs> all, he, all he has to do is lay down. <laughs> so, let's stick with the O line. Um, I think this center class has a chance to be really good. Uh, we we saw Creed Humphrey. You know, we were on the many the, years, many years, and we were on the wrong side of that one mm-hmm. um, for for a lot of those. I mean, we our guys held up as well as we could. I mean, we have some beasts on our defensive line, mm-hmm. um, but Oklahoma ran the ball pretty well on us this past season, and uh, Creed Humphrey. You know, if you're a team in the NFL looking for a center right now, and I know they were talking about, like, how he snaps the ball, I think, with his left hand and whatever. I haven't I've, I've paid a whole lot of attention to it. But, like, those are – those. you look at him, the D3 guy that they had with his stomach out all week that didn't play, um, he looked like he, can, he, he might be good. He was wearing a crop top the whole week. Okay. Uh, he's trying do to get his, his brand up. <laughs> do you? <laughs> I get it. Get, do you? And then Robert Hainsey from mm-hmm. uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame, yep. Very impressed with him. And the other Notre Dame kid, I forgot his name right now. But those guys were amazing on the goal line uh, uh, when they got Carter in the end zone. So there's some there's some some big some big dudes up there that people can go out that that I thought you know from all the reports and then what we saw today in the game as fans that we can be impressed with. I do want to move over to the defensive side. Um, one guy who we didn't talk about earlier, but you texted me. You said uh, you like what you saw from uh, – y- we always talk about the Pittsburgh dudes because they sneak up on you, don't they? They they just produce great – They every every once every three years, they produce a guy who's just great in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, Patrick Jones got a sack yeah. today, and he was, you know, he was in there making some noise. And Trent texted me and was like – there Why does something tell me? Here's another <laughs> random pit guy. Because you had, you know, you got Aaron Donald, who's arguably the best player in the NFL. Larry you had Fitzgerald, who's Larry been doing Fitzgerald. it for 63 years. You had Darrell <laughs> Revis, like, you know, Shady like, McCoy. Great <laughs> players, yeah. randomly. I'm not saying Patrick Jones is going to be on that level, but like, yeah, it was I know, interesting <laughs> to see him flash. And you're like, oh, here we go. Here's another one. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> and then you texted me. Yeah. Um, moving over. So, Taquan Graham was one of my better defensive players, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, was. You know, taking it across the Red River, Trey Norwood had a good day. Um, he had a good lick. I think he had two breakups. I think he had two. Two pass, two pass breakups. Mm-hmm. Um, played the ball well, physical. We know what he can do. Uh, Keith Taylor Jr. So, these are some of the people that are interesting to me. And then we'll get to Kellen Mond. So Keith Taylor Jr. from Washington, great size. Yep. Uh, they got him listed at six two, six three, up there, one ninety five, outstanding size. And I'm looking at a guy like that. And I'm like, man, that's a that's a those type of DBs where, where he can flip his hips because he was the one that generated an offensive pass interference, right? 
Yep, in okay. the end zone. He, uh, yeah. he he also broke up the ball too. I mean, so and he, he played it perfectly. He was right on the hip of the receiver. Wasn't even grabbing grabbing a little of the jersey just to just to make sure he's right there. He he played it perfectly. Shaded open, flipped his hips to to actually see the ball and uh, played it and broke it up. And he got I don't know who pushed off on him. Uh, I think it was Amari Rogers. Okay, yeah, yeah, I Amari think, Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who who made he made himself he some a, money? Yeah, today. he had a great day too. He did. He had a good connection with Kellen Mond. Um, Palmer from Tennessee beat I think beat uh, Taylor for a touchdown on on a little slant. But um, that that's the life of being a DB, right? Like he had like three really good reps in a row, and still got beat for a touchdown on the fourth rep. <laughs> you know, like it's just one of those things where you cannot like. It's an unforgivable position. Um, you're sprinting. You're sprinting for four seconds each play. <laughs> like, like, try doing that. Try doing that with a 30 second rest. Just sprint yeah. as fa- far as you can. Not even cut. Sprint. Sprint for four I think, seconds. <laughs> I think the evaluators are going to be intrigued by him, though. I think that's a guy where they look at and they're like, okay, measurables, measurables, right. tools. Uh, product production wasn't really there. It wasn't great at Washington, but who cares? Like that's a guy. Um, and, and, you know, Tran, I think with, I think one of your questions looking at how Washington played, cause there was a few, you know, there's a few Washington guys, even at the back end of the draft, uh, Tryon and the other Nigerian brother that are, um, uh, supposed to go day one who play for, uh, Co- coach Kwiatkowski. Yep. So, um, you know, just some of your thoughts there on, on, from a Texas lens. So from, from a Texas lens, I think that's really why they wanted to they, – they, they were trying to get a meeting with Jalen Green before he left, uh, is he could be this Similar type, type of player. Size. He is the same size. I think they like what they have in uh, Anthony Cook and also Adam Mora uh, to be that – I would love it to be Buda Baker. But, but you know, let's, let's curb our expectations on that. But, you know, be that type of player. You know, within the defense, but to have that lockdown one-on-one uh, size guy against against the other size receivers, I think that's what they they that's really why they're that's pushing tough. for a meeting with them. Because we lost two big corners, we lost King out of Watson yep. in the middle last year, and Jalen Green and, and Thompson, and 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 Jamison are, are more average size corners. Mm-hmm. Um, so in terms of some of that 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 size, that's actually going to come from probably the younger guys. Um, and Washington has had longer corners before. Now, is that a more of a Jimmy Lake thing, mm-hmm. and, or, or you know, because we know they do delegate, they will delegate responsibilities a little bit more on that side. Um, w- maybe we have to take a little bit closer look. And I know some people are doing that already at Terry Joseph and his passing game schemes at Notre Dame. Yeah, um, and how they married some of those things together, and even back at his time at, at, at Texas A and M. So, more to come on that in the offseason on how we 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 look at that and marry that w- versus our coverages. Um, but I, I think overall, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how they utilize the DBs, um, you know, at the, at, at the next level. Um, the other guy I thought was interesting because I'm also looking at it from a Cowboys perspective, Melon Fonwu. So we, uh, I, I, from, from, I was, I was on board with Obi Melon Fonwu, who the older brother yeah. from UConn that was corner slash safety or safety slash corner. And he didn't work out great in the NFL. I think he's on the practice squad with like the Patriots right now. Maybe, maybe in a different, you know, Dr. Strange, another instance of the universe. <laughs> or the timeline it works out if he doesn't go to the Raiders, but he went to the Raiders and the rest is history. But little bro that goes to Syracuse, he's pretty good. He played really well. He played really well. And he's been doing this all year um, from some of the tape I've been watching. And I'm, I'm looking at, I, I'm open tryouts for the Dallas Cowboys. Dan Quinn, we need some DBs and I need people like that. So those are the type of people we need to be taking a look at. I really like what I saw from from Melon Fonwu today. Um, Tran, one, one last person. We would be remiss if we didn't mention the MVP of the Senior Bowl, Mr. Kellen Mann, yep. quarterback, Texas A&M. So 
we were texting back and forth, and it, we're we're in a group text with uh, Brandon, who everyone knows is a uh, is a A and M guy. Uh, we we're we're always respectful. We're we're never disrespectful. All we said was, you know, Mont's not looking too good right now. Credit to him. He after his after his uh, go at his start uh, as starting quarterback. I think they only had two starting quarterbacks, him and uh, Newman. So they had more. They had more. They got uh, more playing reps. time. Yeah, mm-hmm. more reps. His second time at bat, he came out like gangbusters. Played very confidently, mm-hmm. delivered the ball down the field, was accurate. Developed that relationship with uh, uh with Rogers, especially on that second that second drive, and then it just continued to his third drive. So you know, uh, hats off to him. He played great. Um. Yeah, uh, I, I would have liked to see him use his athleticism a little bit more, but he, I think he was just he was trying to prove a point that he could be a pocket passer. That's kind of been the conundrum, I feel like, and this is from the outside looking in. So everybody always likes to analyze our people. So let's analyze yeah. other somebody else's person that we watch from afar. I look at Kellamon, I'm like, he's a very, very good athlete. He is. He's, he's got, not only does he have a very good arm, he's got good touch. Like I see the, I see the, the the tools, the skills, size is good. I, but I see that 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 mental battle I feel like he has within himself, like you said, of like when I need to just be straight up using my athleticism versus, you know, kind of time and place, right, when I need to more so be surgical. And I thought that was a big issue early in the game. It just didn't seem comfortable. And he has these times where he looks really stiff, really robotic, and he's like – Almost thinking like I, I say this from a standpoint of of growing up as a young QB in another life, going to co- quarterback camps and, and trying mm-hmm. to learn how to play the position. One of the things when we would get coached was you got to de- the the skills got to be ingrained into you like muscle memory. You can't be actively thinking about things. And sometimes I'm not again looking from afar. Sometimes it looks like he's so focused on trying to get every single detail fundamentally right and he comes off almost like a perfectionist that it that it comes out robotic instead of just being a natural playmaker. And I think when he just tries to be a natural playmaker and and flow the game and I think that's why some of the feedback we've gotten from our Texas A&M friends is he he has these rough starts to the games and then as he kind of takes his punches he's almost like a counter puncher he can get going and we saw that today in the senior bowl we've seen that this season with with AM. and was an excellent cost quarterback he's one of the best quarterbacks that they've had in the history of their school um, and ended ended his career with a ton of success right a ton of success so i i just look at i look at some of those those mental battles and, and kind of refining his technique. Again, same boat, I think, is Sam Ellinger. Different issues. But in terms of can he be a very good to high-level backup, I think so. I think so for, yeah. for, for a team. He, he's obviously an intelligent uh, an intelligent young man. Uh, Jimbo trusts him with the, to run the full offense at, this, at, this, uh, at his level. Um, I, I think he's going to be a student of the game. I think he's going to break down. He's going to be great. He's going to be a rock star in the film room. Um, the thing that really does scare me off is that mental block because one of the worst things that could happen to a quarterback is their confidence gets shaken. What happens in the NFL? You're surrounded by super uber athletes mm-hmm. who are the best of the best at their position. And an interception can mess up your uh, – multiple interceptions on multiple drives can definitely mess up your confidence. Agreed. But congratulations to him, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Kellamon, on his journey. Uh, it, was, it was interesting to see a game where you had a Texas quarterback start against another Texas quarterback. Mm-hmm. Hopefully one day soon, while we're all still here, we can uh, see these guys get back together again. Um, maybe with some of the new blood we have coming into our program and with some of the recent success that Texas A&M has had, it it will make sense for us to get back together. Um, I did want to mention just before we wrap the Miami Dolphins and the Carolina Panthers, they got an incredible advantage this week. Normally anytime a a staff, you know, gets to coach up kids for a week. Specifically this year. 
specifically this, this year, year. Yes. with no combine. Um, th- you know, just to get to talk to guys that didn't play today, right? Najee Harris, Mac Jones, Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith, yeah. They were all there. And Miami's sitting there with 10 wins, third pick in the draft. Great advantage. Mm-hmm. Great advantage. So very interesting things to look at. Guys, let us know how you felt the Longhorn players did and hit us in the comments with some other people that may have caught your eye this week. Real quick, also, I know we didn't touch on it at the beginning of the chat. Or uh, Make sure you're liking and sharing the video. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank <laughs> you, Make Trent. sure we're doing that. Uh, I, I, I have a little burner account on, uh, on, on Twitter. I don't really – I don't really use Twitter, but I just use it just to follow sports. And I see people sharing all of uh, Steven's content and everything like that and really do appreciate it. So so continue doing that. We, we love hearing from the fans and everything like that. I love seeing those memes. They crack me up. <laughs> Mr. Arrington. <laughs> Doug coming through with the Tran memes. Um, and we have – we I even put that on Instagram. So for those of you who are – uh, not following on Instagram, we put that one up there from Mr. Doug Arrington in our story. So make sure you hit – and all the links are in the description. But, Tran, thank you for pointing that out. We really appreciate it. And, you know, going through the times that I'm going through right now, I'm not going to be on point with every single thing. So, you know, y'all have some patience with me and some room with us. But, um, we, you know, this content is, like I said before, it's therapeutic. Um, this is the, the – these are – Definitely the funnest parts of my day. Mm. And to be able to do this with y'all is, is, uh, is a pleasure and an honor. Guys, we appreciate y'all. And for our Texas fans out there, remember, horns always up.